Oh, oh, don't pass me. Don't pass me. I said don't pass me. Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How close am I to, to finishing this race? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Hello there. This is DBT. And these are the rooms. And all right, let's continue playing some more The Crew Motor Fest. And today, it's time to do some some concept car extravaganza. I'm going to go into the Supercar Blondie playlist, in which apparently I'm going to be driving mostly concept cars, which is going to be kind of cool. I know already, because I kind of spoiled it myself, to myself, that the very first race is going to be about Lamborghinis, or what's not to like about that? Now, you might notice that I am driving a Lamborghini Reventon. Yeah, I totally do not get confused now between Revuelto and Reventon. Um, the Reventon, how, do I, how did I acquire this car? Well, it has to do with the fact that I already imported my collection from The Crew 2. I did say before that I wanted to wait before I imported it because I wanted to make progress in the game, but uh, in order to access this playlist, I needed to buy a Lamborghini Egoista, which goes for something like a million and a half, or maybe just a million, but it's a lot of monies in this game. So I would have needed to grind quite a bit in order to get it just to buy a car that I already own in the Crew 2. So I decided, you know what, I don't think it makes sense for me to be grinding for all of those Lambos that I want if I already own them in the other game. It would be a lot of time wasted on trying to acquire them in this game. So that's why I imported already my collection, which was only like 50 cars, but still, glad to see all my good old Lambos back in this game. So in the very first event for this playlist, I have to choose between the Lamborghini Egoista and the Terzo Millennio. Now, as much as I want to use the Terzo Millennio because, well, it's the new Lambo in a AAA game and all of that stuff, I think I've only seen this car really in uh, the Asphalt games, so it's kind of cool to see it in full uh, 3D model with a lot of detail and whatnot, but I'm actually going to pick the Egoista because we'll have a chance to drive the Terzo Millennio later on in another playlist. So let's go for this beauty. Now, I did increase a little bit the volume of the in-game voice because apparently Supercar Blonde is going to be talking about the car itself. And, well, I want to listen to what she had to say about this car, though I do have a, quite a bit of information on this car because I did some research when I was working on a video for it, so there is that. Alright, we need to check what this car looks like from the inside. Yes! Absolutely horrendous visibility on this thing. Look at it. It's so difficult to see where you're going. The idea is to push the Lamborghini to really high Like, no, thank you. I'm gonna go in third person. It's fine. I'm gonna say right away that I do remember watching her channel quite a bit long time ago. Well, not too long time, not too long ago, maybe a year ago or so. As of late, I haven't been super interested in watching her videos, but it was always fun to see what car she would show and all of that. Because it kind of makes sense that they chose her for this playlist of concept cars because she has showcased a lot of concept cars in her channel, including the Terzo Millennium, which is not a running a vehicle, it's just the, the build, the, 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 the husk, let's say, but it looks so beautiful. And I haven't checked, but I hope this game does allow the color customization on this car as the Crew 2 allowed. I've seen that some of the cars in this game don't allow to change the color, for example, the Zonda R. But I hope that's not the case for this one. And I gotta say that these guys really like this color scheme of the of the sunset. Everything is very orangey. And I don't hate it. I actually like it quite a bit. It makes it feel like you're chilling while you're driving at really high top speeds with an incredibly expensive car. Allegedly, uh, Lamborghini is asking for about $117 million to buy this car. I think it's literally one of the, if not the most expensive car in the world because of that. I really think they're just memeing with that price. I don't think uh, Lamborghini wants to sell it. They just set up a ridiculously high price for the sake of, hey, we're going to keep this one. Oh, hold up. The second race seems that I get to choose against between these two. So, all right, we'll try the Egoista. Fine, it's time to try the Terzo Millennium because I really, really want to see it. Good choice. All right, that Lamborghini Terzo Millennio is ready to race. And I almost forgot, it's going to have a special sonic signature to replace the roar of the V12 engine that Lamborghini is so well known for. The yeah, but if it's going to be one of those annoying whines of electric cars, into the future. Eh, I don't know. Not super excited about that. But let's see what sound they gave it in this game. I'm really curious to hear it. Please let it be something decent. Please let it be something decent. I can't bear the idea of having a Lamborghini that doesn't vroom. All right. Okay. Okay. That is... Peculiar. 
You know what? At least it does have some prrr to it, you know? It doesn't sound just like a classic wee. It has a little bit of a growl. You know what? I don't dislike it. I mean, it's nowhere near as good as a proper uh, combustion engine sound, but still. That's kind of interesting. Now I'm noticing that while I'm on the road, or rather in the pavement, it makes one noise, but if I go off-road, it makes a different noise. Check this out. The whine happens on the road. If I go off-road, it stops. Kind of peculiar. I may or may not have restarted the race because I wasn't doing very well, so this is take two. But man, I, I gotta say, so far, this is my favorite take on an engine sound, at least for the Terzo Milenio. Now, I do gotta check what this thing looks like from the inside because, of course, I'm, I'm really curious. So, let me change camera. Oh, hello. Well, at least the, the visibility is much better than that of the Egoista. That thing was absolutely horrendous. And man, I really don't think I had ever seen what the theoretical interior, interior of a Terzo Milenio is. Just listen to these noises that it makes. Again, not not saying that it sounds better than a V12 or whatever, but it, it isn't bad. I'm very pleasantly surprised with the sound that they gave this car. I wonder if this is a sound specific to this car or if this is something that other electric cars are also gonna use, so. It's almost like a vroom, almost. It would seem that every time I hit the throttle, you can hear a weird thump, check this out. <laughs> oh, what a beauty of a car. What an interesting sound they gave it. And for once, I'm not disappointed. Straight up disappointed by an electric car in one of these games. So, nice. Very well done, the Crew Motor Fest. I appreciate you for it. And just like that, that's going to be the Terzo Millennial Race done. And I crashed it a little bit. It's fine. All right. I got to admit, for once, the game straight up baffled me. I have a choice between the Bugatti La Voiture Noir and the Bugatti Veyron Varchetta. I had never once in my life seen this car. Wow, that looks very strange because it's not only a Veyron with the, with the roof chopped up, it's actually a completely different model of car. You can see the, the grille in the front is much wider, the horseshoe shape type of thing that every Bugatti has. It's incredibly, incredibly wide. The the whole car is different, it's not the same car. For a moment I thought, oh, it's probably just a Veyron with the, without the roof, but no, it is not. Now, I've talked about how this game has much better graphics than the first game, but how about that engine sound? Pretty good, I would say. I mean, I'm not huge into Bugattis, so if anybody here knows more about Bugattis than I do, and you can tell me if this is a good or a bad sound, but to me, this sounds very, very nice. Would be to switch to the cockpit view to take a closer look. This is your chance to admire the incredibly futuristic interior as well. Fine, lady. Fine, I'm looking at it. Jesus. I mean, to be fair, I do like seeing the interior of cars just to see what that looks like. Now, is that different than a regular Veyron? I have no idea, but hey, looks fine. Not my thing, though. I still prefer a third-person view. I mean, Bugatti already makes some very, very, very low production models. So, it does surprise me that I had never seen or heard about this car. This is very interesting to me i think over time obviously the more you play a game the more you get used to it but now as much as i've said before that this game did feel comfortable ah jesus christ it's fine it's just a little scratch on the concept car look i'm even carrying some rocks and stuff <laughs> um the more i played it the more comfortable i feel with it actually that's devo headlights isn't it huh uh-huh, I see the pattern. So I have again a choice between both cars. Well, we tried one, we have to try the other one as well. Again, people love to quote this car as being the most expensive car out there, but it is not. It is not. A bunch of Ferraris, old Ferraris sell for like 50, 60 million. And like I just mentioned uh, earlier in this video, the, the Egoista supposedly sells for 117 or 120 million. So there is that. All right, look at that, six exhaust. Oh, that's so, so extra, you know? In the introduction video to this car, she talked about how this car translates to the black car in French, which is true. I already knew that, Lee, come on. Um, now, I, I don't want to show you the all of these cinematics because otherwise the video is going to end up being much, much, much longer than necessary. But it's kind of cool that the game does provide you some information, some back, backstory, not backstory, some, um, what would I say? 
some miscellaneous information in relation to the car that you're going to be driving, at least for this uh, this playlist, which obviously being about um, prototype cars, well, yeah, it makes sense that they want to give you some more information as to what the hell you're driving. Now, I wonder, if I acquire this car, can I change the color? And in that case, if I do, does it stop being La Voiture Noire? So say, if I paint the car red, does it become La Voiture Rouge? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, alright, catching up, catching up, catching up. Oh, get out of the way. No, get out of... We're fine. It's fine. Never doubt of myself. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, don't pass me. Don't pass me. I said don't pass me. Jesus. Uh-oh, uh-oh. How close am I to, to finishing this race? Oh, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Listen, it's not that I restarted the race for any other reason than to actually just look at the car again. Because, you know... I want to drive it more. I, I don't know when I'll have another chance to drive this game in this car. Dude, Jesus Christ. Drive this car in this game. That's totally where I restarted. It has nothing to do with me losing because I never lose. Ever. And come to think about it, we didn't even look at the interior of the car. So, yes, yeah, totally. This is the reason why I restarted the race. Absolutely. Because I hadn't looked at it. And we need to look at it. I, I don't know. We, we got to... Oh, look at that turning radius on the wheel. That's fantastic. That's another thing that this game does already better than Forza Horizon, where in that game, whenever you're steering, I think the maximum turning angle of the wheel um, in the cockpit view, it's of 90 degrees. Well, this game seems to go all the way to 180. I don't know if it goes further than that. Now, if you see me struggling here a little bit against the eyes, because I'm playing uh, in difficulty four, I believe, four out of five. So it's a relatively difficult well, difficulty, and it's enjoyable, though at some parts it really gets insane with how good the, the the AI can drive in parts where you're like, how are they pulling that off? But it's okay, it's manageable. Use the car's full potential, unleash it, no regrets. Go for it, driver. Weren't you telling me to be careful with these cars before, Supercar Blondie? Now you're telling me to just go for it? What if I wreck it? $20 million in debt. No, thank you. Third and final part of our dream cars. Third tour. and final part? And we've got oh, two man. Great surprises coming straight from France. Oh, These Renault Trezor and GT by Citroën. I don't know how to pronounce that. that. <laughs> All right, now here comes a question about these two cars. I know about the Renault Trezor, uh, electric car and whatnot, but the Citroën, it's a bit of a, a peculiar situation because this car is actually built in real life and it has, I believe, a B B8 or B10. I'm not sure. But the actual concept is supposed to be electric, so I wonder which one they brought. I'm going to start with the Trezor, because if the Citroen rooms, I want it to be the second car to, that I'm driving here. Alright, so I think I got the idea that first it's just going to be a race by myself against the time, and then later it's going to be a race uh, between these two cars. Whoa! Whoa, listen to that noise! It's not rooms. That's not a room. That's a noise. Um... I don't love it. I don't hate it. I dislike it a little bit. But at least it makes more than just the ugly. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm sorry to be bringing Forza Horizon so much into this talk. But Forza Horizon and a lot of the electric cars has, has really barely audible sounds. And for the most part, they tend to be very boring. There's a few electric cars that they do have some very mechanical wearing sounds, which is kind of nice. I suppose, yes, all things considered, but, oh boy, over here at least so far, the, the two electric cars that I have tried, um, they sound interesting, a little bit of that. All right, we need to look at this car from the inside, and that's gonna be crazy for your eyes, just prepare for this. It's gonna be red. Oh, actually, it doesn't look nearly as crazy as it does in real life. So, as I said, um, Supercar Blondie has done a very good job of presenting or showing uh, concept cars in her video, and actually she showed this car and man, from the inside, it's absolutely crazy because it's so ridiculously red that I don't know how you don't hit, get a headache by being inside that thing. Two seconds to spare. Beautiful. Still made it. Originally, this car was created for the video game industry, and they designed. Oh, she didn't. She didn't actually say the name of the game, being obviously Gran Turismo. I swear, it's true. It's a limited number of these cars to be sold at around two million dollars each, but. Unfortunately, it never came to be. Two million dollars for such rare car? World, and you get to I think that's okay. Right now. What is that noise? What's happening?
Huh. What is that noise? All right, I'm gonna do something a little bit unorthodox. I'm gonna restart the game for a second. Because right between the previous event and this one, I noticed that my rooms for the Gallardo, which is my car that I drive um, when I'm going from one point to another, it actually sounded a little bit off. So I don't know if there's an issue here with the sounds or if this car is indeed supposed to sound like that. So, all right, give me a minute. All right, take two. There we go. I knew it. I knew there was something off with that sound. Listen to this. Oh, it's the roomy version of the car. Let's go, baby. Now, that's going to make me question if the other cars were sounding as they were supposed to. I'm going to say yes. Because, like I said, I noticed this issue with the sound because of the Gallardo that I drive between races. But in the previous one, it sounded fine. So, I want to believe that all the other sounds were all right. But listen to this. Now, we're talking, baby. To be completely honest, I do believe that this car is very, very good looking. French cars tend to be very strange. I don't know what is it with French cars. That they love making some weird looking cars. But that's not a bad thing. You know that I like extreme designs and this thing looks absolutely killer. Although, I gotta say, I wonder what would this thing look like with a big wing. I hope that you can... Ah! You can put a big wing on this thing. Oh, look at this. Ah, I keep on hitting walls. It's fine, it's fine. I'm getting used to the car. And don't worry about the Renault Trezor being so far ahead of me. It's okay. I might have to restart this. But just look at this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. As much as I like looking at the cars from the inside because, well, it makes you feel like you're in there. I'm terrible driving like this. So I think third person is going to have to be again. I did not restart the race. You restarted the race. Whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, the reason why I know that this car is both electric. There's an electric version and a roomy version. It's actually because... I first saw this car in precisely a Super Blondie, excuse me, a Supercar Blondie video, um, and it vroomed. Then I I saw this car in Asphalt 9, and it vroomed, so everything was fine, it was clear to me. But then when I saw this car in Asphalt 8, then it was electric, and I'm like, wait a second, what's up with that? And that's when I, I, I understood, I did some more research, and yeah, I noticed that the car is meant to be electric in the future. But for the time being, in order to build one and to be drivable, they made it into a, a, a combustion engine car. In my opinion, it's better that way. Listen, it's not that I want to continue burning dinosaurs in order to fuel the cars. But man, it's just that electric... Oh my god, am I gonna hit this again? Ah, come on! Huh, it's almost like I could rewind time and do this turn better. Oh, incredible. <laughs> yeah, I don't necessarily have anything against electric cars. It's just the, the, the lack of noise or those very annoying noise that or, or sounds that people love to put in these cars where they just go like mm -hmm. How am I supposed to get excited about that as a car enthusiast, huh? And don't get me wrong, I understand that they have insane amounts of torque and they can be super fun when you're driving them and all of that But just from the sound perspective, they just seem so boring was it Dodge that made an electric vehicle that had some kind of roomy noises with a bunch of air going through or something? I know it was an American car. It was like an American muscle car, except that now it's electric, but they wanted to put some noise behind it. I thought it was very cool. Very interesting approach. I'm not going to say that I loved it, but it definitely, I think, was a step in the right direction in terms of, of sounds for electric cars. Because, man, I just hate those annoying E sounds. All right, so she wants me to floor it. Fine. Let me just charge up a little bit of nitro and then let's see how fast this thing can go. 392 kilometers. Nice. Probably can go faster if you have more nitro, but oh well. I just didn't know if I was going to have enough time to build it up and use it all in a long straight. It's fine. It's already beaten up a little bit. It's okay. It's just a very expensive car, that's all. $2 million again? I mean, it's very expensive, obviously, but for a super, super, super low production vehicle, it seems somewhat reasonable, I guess. Hello there. Alright, I'm gonna say this is another car I didn't know. Uh, electric, of course it had to be electric. Jesus Christ. What does this one sound like? Oh, Jesus. All right, yeah, they went all out on giving these cars really weird sounds, but I actually appreciate that. At least it sounds at least it sounds interesting. Not my favorite, <laughs> but that is something. Long and tough race. 
Force. All right, unsurprisingly, I mean, it's a barcade attack car, so there's not a ton to see other than the steering wheel and all of that stuff. Now that those little winglets are up on my car, it looks like it has, like, cartoonishly uh, pointy teeth, doesn't it? And this vehicle also has that weird thump when you are using or, or flooring the throat. Check this out. <laughs> Get out of the way, you beauties. Electric, but still beauties. Oh, I think I didn't say this, but I do like a lot the design of the Renault Trezor. I think it's an elegant, beautiful car. This that I'm driving looks interesting, but... Eh. One thing that I haven't mentioned in this entire video is that this playlist, unlike the previous ones that I've shown in this type of videos, I haven't played before. I hadn't played any of this, so I hadn't seen it. I'm not making this up. And you will be able to tell because the whatever reward I'm gonna get, that animation only plays once when you finish the playlist for the first time. So that's what we're gonna be seeing after I win this race because of course I'm gonna win it. But all things considered, yeah, I'm gonna say that so far from the electric cars experience that I've had, I'm not straight up agonizing from playing them, so that is that is a very positive, because in Forza Horizon 5, legit, there was, I remember one week where it was all about electric cars, and I had to literally put a video of V12 or V10 engines on the background so that I could listen to something as I was driving, because it was absolutely annoying to not be able to hear anything, or very, very, very quiet uh, E sounds. So this game is already doing much better in that regard, and I appreciate it for it. And this should be pretty much the last straight. And we should be done. Which is, is going to... Ah, which is also going to mean getting my reward. Which I believe it's this car. I'm not sure. But I believe so. And just like that we have finished the playlist. And now we can get our reward. And now we get to hear a V10. Because we need some rooms in our lives, and this is how we do it. Oh yeah, baby! This is another one of the cars that I imported from my uh, the Crew 2 collection, so there is that. Kara, would you shut up, please? I hate that as I am arriving to my reward, she's already spoiled, and Kara continues to spoil. I know now that I'm gonna get the Silver Arrow. If I didn't know, well, I guess, so the reveal is not that impressive anymore, is it? Ah, Jesus Christ! This animation is cool, especially when you don't know what you're going to be getting. But as I said, Kara just loves to talk and blabber all day long, and she spoils every single thing. When I'm going to reach a new race, she's like, Oh, in the next race you're going to do this. Shut up! I want to see it by myself. Could you stop spoiling it? Jesus! I'm okay. All right, so again, looks cool. I, again, don't love those incredibly smooth lines that they love to put in, in, in electric cars, in futuristic looking cars, but I've seen worse. And I say that as I earlier said that I like the Trezor, but oh well, whatever, don't pay attention, it's fine. So there you have it, that was the concept car playlist with Supercar Blondie. I was definitely very interested on trying that because I knew there were some Lambos to be found over there. But overall, it was a very pleasant uh, and not extremely long playlist. Because some of these playlists can be very, very long. This one wasn't enjoyable. And I actually got to see some cards that I didn't even, that I didn't even know existed. So that's kind of cool. If you're enjoying this type of videos, why don't you hit the like button already? And let me know in the comments if you would like to see any particular playlist that I haven't done already. If it's one that I played already, I'll play it again. It's not a problem. But that's gonna do it for this video. Check the other videos that I've recorded for the crew motor phase. There's a lot of fun to be found over there. And what happened with my driver? Did you see her head? All right. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.